Hey guys, I want to remind you of something. From the word of God, it says the letter kills, but the spirit of God brings us life. It's the spirit of God that brings us life. A lot of churches, a lot of pastors, a lot of people, they share, but they share the wrong things. They share to try and help somebody, and they really are genuinely trying to help or uplift, but they do it many times without the Spirit. They use the law, the letter. And they use the tactics of condemnation and sometimes they don't even realize it. But I just want to remind somebody today that it isn't the law that saves us. It isn't the law that we keep that keeps us in right standing with God. The fact is... Once you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, after you've received Him and received Him as your ultimate sacrifice, then what happened was the divine exchange. He literally took off His robe of righteousness at the cross and He placed it on your shoulders so that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ and that he could take all of your sin, your robe of sin, the sinful nature and place it on his own self. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. This is the gospel that Christ bore our sins on the tree, every one of them And all the wrath of God and all the judgment of God fell upon Jesus. He exhausted the wrath of God for you and for me. This is the divine exchange. And if we're not preaching that Jesus took it, that Jesus fulfilled the law, He kept it perfectly. He fulfilled the law. He took it to the cross in order to be the perfect sacrifice. See, if he hadn't have kept the law to a T, every single one, he couldn't have gone to the cross to be the sacrifice for our sins. But he kept the law in perfection so that we could receive his righteousness. And what a lot of people don't understand is then, see, Paul talks about how It has vanished away. The letter killeth. It has vanished away. And don't you dare mix the two, law and grace. If you are trying to maintain your salvation from a works, law-based place, then you have fallen from grace you're not relying on Jesus and his finished work if you are trying to keep the law and stay holy stay holy and if you're just like depending on what you can do and your own efforts of holiness and right living then you are not leaning on Jesus who completed the work who fulfilled the law for us What you need to do if you are one of these that lean towards, I've got to keep it, I've got to maintain righteousness to um, walk in holiness. See, we're not maintaining righteousness. We've been robed in righteousness and nothing can take it off of us. We've been changed. Either the cross worked or it didn't. Either the blood works or it doesn't. Either Christ finished the work or he didn't. Either God's a liar or he's not. And I can tell you for a fact that he did. He said it is finished. It is done and he cannot lie. And something I want to say is a lot of people tend to forget this. 
but it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. It is His goodness that leads us to repentance. There's a scripture that says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Nobody sees this verse or quotes it. How shall we who are dead to sin, dead to sin, live any longer therein? We have been freed from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. Sin doesn't have dominion over us anymore. And until you realize that you have been set free, and until you realize that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, and until you surrender yourself to the Lord and say, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to try to maintain righteousness anymore because you are my righteousness. I am not good enough in and of myself. Lord, I turn it over to you. I thank you. You're covering me in your blood right now. And his his fountain of forgiving blood, the sacrifice, it never stops flowing. And we don't have to try and get under it. You're under it. You're covered. You're eternally secure. The Bible says once and for all. He went to the cross once and for all and cried, it is finished. The work is finished. We must receive it by faith. It's grace through faith, not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God. So stop with the works-based salvation. There is no such thing. It is Christ-based, finished work-based salvation that will redeem you. And so I invite you, if you don't know Jesus, it's so simple. It's so simple. It's as simple. I have seen people receive Jesus by only saying, Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. Believe. And declare him as your Lord and Savior. And he is faithful and he is just to forgive you of your sins. And then you can walk in righteousness and you can walk in healing and you can walk in love and you can walk in a continual forgiveness without the requirement of asking for it. That's another thing. A lot of people try to maintain their salvation by asking for forgiveness of sins daily and continually. That's not scriptural. You are forgiven period period don't confess your sins confess Jesus Christ confess righteousness thank you Jesus you are enough I am the righteousness of God in Christ and Lord I thank you that I am forgiven because your blood worked and the cross was a success grace y'all is the very power of God to sin no more and to walk in freedom whom the sun sets free is free indeed and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death praise God for his grace praise God for his grace he is so good and so I just encourage you today look towards his goodness look towards his righteousness Take your eyes off of failures. Take your eyes off of sin and look to Jesus. Look to the cross. He finished the work. The cross was a success. And once you become a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, that veil has been torn. And you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Not confessing your sins, but confessing who you are in Christ. Amen.